Okay, we are back with Runga Kuda. Uh, remember in the last video we basically looked at the Euler method of solving ordinary differential equations, initial value problems, and we looked at two, uh, two cases. The heat transfer problem, heat flow from a block to a basically a heat sink, um, and we found that that worked reasonably well. And then we looked at a spring mass system, so kind of like an ideal oscillator where this mass will just oscillate back and forth on the spring forever. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba, where's the plot of this? Um, so you see the black line is the actual um, solution to the differential equation, and then our Euler method gave this uh, the dotted lines here, which are obviously obviously a problem. So let's now move on to Runge Kutta. So we have the same differential equation. So dy dx, we want to solve for y. I'm sorry, dy dt, and we're looking for y is some function, known function here, and we have an initial condition y at time equal to zero is equal to some value. I labeled it y naught here, and I copied these equations from the Wikipedia page here. So our time update is kind of the same as before. We just take some time increment h here, add it to our previous time at, at t sub n, and we get our time at t sub n plus 1. The main difference is here, the update rule for uh, for y. So, so like Euler, this is essentially uh, y at n plus 1 is equal to y at n plus some term um, that depends on the derivatives. And what these k's are, are essentially derivatives evaluated at different points. And then we try to take a weighted average to kind of get a good good estimate of the derivative. So k1 is essentially the derivative at our first point here, at our, our known point. And then we use that to evaluate and estimate the derivative at a point halfway uh, between our intervals. So we get a new derivative estimate at that halfway point. We then use that derivative to kind of re-estimate the derivative at the same uh, same point. And then we use that third derivative again to estimate the derivative at the kind of our full interval here. And then this just goes in and they're weighted um, such that the middle two points, these k2 and k3, are kind of weighted twice as much as these endpoints here. And then we divide by six just to kind of normalize um, normalize this since 1 plus 2 is 3 plus 2 is 5 plus uh, 1 is 6. We need to divide that out. So that's all there is to it. It's really just basically a variation on the Euler technique. However, it is much more stable and as I said in the previous video, uh, if you've used any of the solvers in MATLAB or uh, SciPy, you've used this without without knowing it because all, all, all of those are essentially moderate, moderate, uh, moderate tweaks on this. Maybe just slight um, uh, you know, they might have variable step sizes and things like that. So let's go on and implement uh, this for our two uh, problems, the heat flow and the spring mass system. So here are the parameters we used uh, earlier for that problem. Our initial time is, of course, zero. We set our um, temperature initially to 30 degrees and our time step size was point, 0.1 seconds. And then I created uh, empty lists here just to append our data to. Um, so I call that time underscore RK temperature underscore RK, and recall that I have a function up here already uh, from that previous video here, this that calculates the derivative for us. So I'm not gonna bother reproducing this down below, but in a spreadsheet, you might have to, to do that. So let's come down here, and again, we'll use a while loop. So while T is less than 1800, we need to calculate our K value, so K1, well, k1 is just our derivative uh, function here, evaluated at our points. So this is uh, heat equations evaluated at t and capital T, so time and, and time and temperature. k2 is this. It's our derivative function here, evaluated at half of a uh, time step later, and then we use the same, we use the k1 derivative to estimate the y value at that point. So here's our half of a time step, and here is the estimated y value, or capital T temperature value in this in this case. Likewise, k3 is equal to the same idea. Um, we're still evaluating at that half of a uh, time step later, and it's the same idea as k2, except we're just using the derivative here at k2 uh, to, to approximate that. And lastly, K4 is evaluated at the full time step later, T plus H, 
and we're using uh, k3 as our derivative approximation to evaluate the an estimate of the function at at uh, one that that full time step later. So that is all there is to it. We need to now just implement these two update rules. So we come down here and we say that little t is equal to little t plus h and let's append that now. So time underscore rk dot append t and our temperature update capital T is equal to capital T plus 1.0 divided by 6 times h times the quantity, oops, I need a multiplication sign, and uh, inside the parentheses we need a k1 plus 2 times k2 plus 2 times k3 plus k4. Okay, that looks good, and now we just need to do a temperature underscore rk dot append capital T. And let's just see if that runs. So, plt.plot time underscore rk temperature underscore rk and I don't know, let's make these dots again. Uh, based on memory it looks good. Let's just see uh, at, at uh, 25 degrees, we get there about what, uh, let me put on grid lines here, plt.grid, true, so, eh, and, and rather than eyeballing it, let's just go up here and grab our uh, actual, so this was solution, did I use solution down here too? Do, 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 yes I did, so let's call this solution solution temp for temperature run that oh we're gonna have to update uh, well I'll do that later um, but we'll just plot that here so let's come down here plt dot plot sol underscore temperature dot t sol underscore temperature dot y and we'll make that a black line. I saw an error. Why is there an error? Do I have to explicitly? I guess I do. So they should agree basically perfectly. So something funky is going on here. Um, well, that should be a six and not a five. That'll do it. There we go. Perfect match. Okay, so let's finish off the Python part here with the harmonic oscillator, um, that spring math system. And what is the name of my equation system uh, that I defined somewhere up here? Uh, just equations, okay? And now recall that this also takes, uh, this x value that it takes is a vector given the position and velocity. So um, it's essentially the same thing we did before. So I've already put in our initial conditions here, and I've also created um, list, uh, empty list placeholders. So while t is less than or equal to, was it 1800? What do we use for the... Um, for it up here. Oh, 24 seconds. T is less than or equal to 24. Uh, I'm going to come down here and before doing the K values, I'm just going to do our time update step. So T is equal to T plus H and uh, time underscore RK dot append T. So this yeah, okay, so we can't exit out of this loop. That way we can um, test these uh, derivative terms here because they're slightly more complicated in this case because they're two-dimensional instead of just, just one, one uh, scale or a number. So let's calculate that first value, k1 is equal to, is equal to equations, t comma, uh, 
uh, x comma v. Do I want to keep it like this? Or do I want to come up here and create some sort of um, dummy variable? I don't know. Um, capital X is equal to x comma v. And then replace this here with capital X. I might do that um, because we need to update these uh, X's as we go along. Are there any issues here? Okay, so far so good. K2 is equal to. Actually, we're going to need to update that capital X first. So X is equal to. Uh, how are we updating our X's here, our, our uh, vectors? So it is the initial value h k1 over 2. So this is equal to this will be x plus k1 the zeroth component of k1 uh, times h over 2 and the second element will be v plus basically the same thing, k1, the first element, the one-th element, if you want to call it that, times h over 2. And then our update here is equations. Our times now t plus h over 2. And our capital X vector. And now we just repeat this. Let's just copy <clears throat> paste so this should now be uh, k2 there should be an h here shouldn't there h and this is also a k2 and then we need to put that h back in up here and then let's see here this is now k3 and now k4, uh, so let's redefine x. x is equal to, it is equal to x plus h times k3, zeroth component, and the v plus h times k3, first component. And our uh, k4 is equal to um, equations t plus h and our capital X. Does this run? Seems to. Uh, let's put in our update for uh, x is equal to and v is equal to. It is equal to x plus 1.0 over 6.0 times h times k1 plus 2 times k2 plus 2 times k3 plus k4. Oh, and we actually have to put in the components here. 0, 0, 0, and lastly, 0. So, v is equal to v plus 1.0 divided by 6.0 times h times k1 1 k2 1 uh, 2 times k2 1 plus 2 times k3 1 plus k4 1 um, for some reason that parenthesis ended up there. Let's put it there. Does this run? Seems to. Uh, let's append these. So what do I call them? I call them position and velocity RK. Position RK. That append X. V PLT dot plot uh, time p 
position. Oops. That append. Oops, something is fishy. Okay, so I grabbed our original solution uh, from the solve IBP, IVP method, and I want to replace this with dots. Uh, just to make sure that we uh, get things right here so we can compare them. And now let's just go up and see if we can figure out what is the issue. So there's one obvious typo here. Um, let me just put a space in here. This should be a plus sign on multiplication. And there we go, perfect match. Excellent. Uh, what I am going to do is uh, do the spreadsheet, uh, but I'm not going to do that live because it should be pretty obvious, and I think it'll just be kind of uh, kind of dull, uh, kind of dull just watching me type all that out, especially with all the typos I tend to do. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do it off of the recording and then just quickly talk through it just to save time. Okay, so here are the uh, two spreadsheets. I did the heat transfer problem on the so, uh, second tab here, the harmonic oscillator. They're pretty straightforward and pretty obvious. The only thing here uh, to note is that um, the derivatives are kind of calculated directly, or rather the uh, the shifts in the x values here. Let's actually go to the, uh, to the notebook. Um, these shifted values are that are used in calculating the k's are kind of built directly into the formula here. Maybe there's a more clever way of handling it, but um, that's how I did it here. Uh, it's not really an issue, except for perhaps in the harmonic oscillator case, it kind of gets uh, a little more complicated because you have to do K values for both the position and the velocity. And if you go back to that notebook and we look at our code here, uh, we were able, where, where do we calculate our Ks here? Uh, that's for the heat equation. Ba, 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 where is it? Here they are. Uh, we use the fact that our equation system that we defined up here. Do, 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 where, 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 where is it? Uh, here it is. It returns that kind of vector valued uh, function. Uh, it returns that vector valued uh, function, and then we pull out the individual components when, when we. Uh, build these k values right so we, we reference them explicitly uh where is it here uh, down here where we calculate the uh the updates k sub zero k sub one and, and and so on so um yeah that's all there is to it i will upload uh this uh excel excel file uh i will clean up those notebooks and upload that yeah and uh cool Awesome. Uh, pretty simple. And for something that's kind of that simple, I didn't expect it to take uh, a, a series of two, two videos, but oh well. I kind of have a new project going on at work, so probably the rate at which these videos come out is going to slow down a bit. And I haven't really come up with any new topics in the last day or two, so if you have any ideas, please feel free to leave them in the comments. Uh, likewise, if there are any questions on this video or the previous one, again, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments. And until next time, see ya.